one of the things that we've been doing is highlighting the different ministries that we support. If you remember recently, we've had the folks from Mercy Ships. We've had the folks from Tyson House and the folks from the Salvation Army. Today, it'd be good to hear about our partnership with Narcotics Anonymous. And today, we want to welcome Adam Edwards. Adam is a longtime church member, currently a council member, and he's also one of the great leaders of the band at the Contemporary Service. Adam, thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. Good morning. So this is very different for me this morning. Uh, when, when Pastor Bob asked me to share my recovery story and tell you a little bit about Narcotics Anonymous, uh, I, I, of course, agreed, but uh, it's different because although I've shared my uh, recovery story dozens of times over the years, it's usually in front of recovering addicts. It is um, rare to do something like this in front of uh, non-addicts that aren't sitting in a circle asking about how they can uh, find recovery. Um, we practice anonymity. It's one of the spiritual foundations of Narcotics Anonymous, but uh, my thought and idea is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm, I'm proud to share my story because there, there might be one of you out there that has a brother or a sister or a spouse or a cousin or somebody that... Uh, that is still struggling with addiction. And maybe if you hear my story, that uh, that might give you somebody that you know that you could refer that person to. And uh, our mission, our, our, our job is, is to help those still struggling. So uh, as many of you know, uh, we open our doors to uh, Narcotics Anonymous and, and keep them in our prayers. Uh, we have meetings three days a week. Uh, and if you're like me, about 15 or so years ago, uh, I would come in the evening sometimes to, to do band practice. And I would see this group of these people sitting in a circle as I walked by. I, I really didn't ask any questions about that group. And uh, I was a little reticent to even, you know, I, I would pull one of the, oh, there's those people and just kind of walk around. Um, and then about 11 or so years ago, I had to come to grips with the fact that my own life was in a pretty serious uh, downward spiral due to alcohol and prescription drug abuse. Um, I was utterly on the verge of losing everything that I loved. Um, for the addict without recovery, um, it's common for us to say that the ends are always the same, and that's jails, institutions, and death. And that's where I was heading, honestly. So in desperation, uh, I turned to Pastor Bob, and I sat down in his office, and I told him my story, uh, and I uh, and I cried, and, uh, and, and he kind of looked me in the eye and, and said that there's help for you. And he encouraged me to attend a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. He actually took me to my first Narcotics Anonymous meeting and, and sat through that, that meeting with me. I didn't know or understand anything about recovery. One of the things that I didn't know or understand is that uh, part of recovery, regardless of what your drug of choice is, is that you know, we consider alcohol to be a drug. So once, once I heard that in the meeting, I was like, whoa, 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 you know, I, I, I'm not giving up a beer every now and then. So uh, once I learned that, uh, I kind of pulled back. And, uh, and it took me about another year to actually get into the program as I struggled and, and tried to do it on my own, which we now kind of laugh and think that's, that's something that's almost impossible to do. The cool thing was, while I was at that meeting, at the very end, a pretty lady that I didn't know came up to me, and she gave me a little piece of paper, and she said, my husband can help you. Uh, and the little piece of paper had a man's name on it and a phone number. And for whatever reason, uh, a God reason, I kept that little piece of paper in my pocket and on my shelf and I'd pull it out of my jeans and it would sit on my counter and I would look at it and I would, for about a year, I had that little piece of paper that made its way around my house and in my closet and maybe back into my jeans pocket and in and out. And I never knew who that person was and I never knew if I called that phone number who it would reach out to. And then when I'd finally hit my bottom, um, pretty much out of work, uh, and just in complete desperation, um, I went to a treatment facility. And what I learned from the treatment facility more than anything else was that I needed to go back to these meetings, that the Narcotics Anonymous meetings, any 12-step meeting really, that's really the central key 
that I needed to find a sponsor and then I needed to go back to these meetings. So I did about a year later. Um, and I sat down in that meeting, uh, and I heard, I heard this guy sharing and this guy was the most vivacious, the most full of life, the happiest guy that I think I'd ever heard speak. Um, and you know, my disease for years was telling me you can't stop because if you stop, you'll never have joy again. You'll never have happiness again. And then I saw this guy talking and sharing and I'm like, this guy's in recovery. This is the happiest, most joyful person I've ever met. So I knew at that moment, I knew that that guy had to be my sponsor. And so he comes out of the meeting and I introduce myself. I said, I'm Adam and I'm looking for a sponsor, man. And I, I think you're the one. And, uh, he said, I'm sorry. He said, my name's Andrew. Um, and that's, that's the guy on the piece of paper. Um, so Andrew became my sponsor, uh, the person that was, uh, was in my pocket for over a year. And, uh, and, and, and Andrew helped me to find recovery. And so I started going to these meetings, uh, at his house, at his family's house on, on Sundays. Um, and that's where I grew up. You know, that's where I learned to find a new way to live. Um, and the meetings weren't just with him. That pretty young lady that gave me that number is Carrie. Uh, the Andrew that, that, uh, that I met that became my sponsor is uh is the Andrew that you now know that has served as president of our church council uh and the pretty young lady is his wife Carrie the one that gave me my number so God used my mistakes my brokenness um to to create something beautiful and that was the relationship that I have with the parrots uh the inspiration from Pastor Bob to attend that first Narcotics Anonymous meeting. And, and in turn, uh, that brought Carrie and, and Andrew to us to become kind of vital pieces and uh, super involved uh, people at our church. Right. And, and it's, it's brought Jack Parrott here and it's brought Scarlett and it's brought Olivia. So we're, we're so blessed for that. Um, in NA, we practice the 12 steps. The first Three steps are crucial to recovery, just so you have a little background and knowledge about it. Step one is that we admit that we're powerless over our addiction and our lives have become unmanageable. Step two is that we came to believe that a power greater than us can restore us to sanity. And step three, we made the decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Mine is just one story, but there are thousands of stories. These NA meetings are not just for those struggling with narcotics. We welcome all those struggling with addiction. The only requirement for membership in NA is the desire to stop using. And although the NA literature doesn't insist that addicts ascribe to any particular faith tradition, I personally feel in my heart that the 12 steps are one of the best real life examples of Christ's message in the gospel put into action. It's one of the best examples I can think of of what loving your neighbor really looks like. So every week you include the folks at Narcotics Anonymous in your prayers, and my hope is that sharing my story will help you understand why. When we open our doors to the 12-step groups, we're doing more than just offering physical space. We are inviting God to use our church as a place to save lives and help those that are struggling find a new way to live. So I thank you, and we hope that you will continue to pray for the NA Fellowship and all addicts still suffering. Thank you.